Today, I'm going to introduce the article A Scalable Pipeline for Designing a Reconfigurable Organism by Bay Technologies Journal Club, made by me, Loredana Parisi, Michela Ciocca and Giorgia Nicolini. So, Loredana, please, you can start. Okay, thanks, Camilla. And good morning to everybody. And uh, today I will show you this um, interesting article that uh, we choose it because uh, it's innovative, uh, mostly for its, uh, its future application. Uh, so, um, until today, uh, several methods underway to design and build bespoke living systems that have, uh, of course, this different disadvantages. And, uh, for example, we have uh, single cell based methods, which is not scalable to rational control of uh, multicellular shape and uh, behavior. Another method is based on uh, synthetic organoids uh, that is shown in this. Uh, uh, cartoon, uh, which have a limited control over their structure and function. And finally, we have the uh, most recent method uh, is the, uh, that is a bioengineering use of 3D scaffolds, which has the inability to predict behavioral impact or a directory biological construction. So um, it doesn't allow researchers to generate new form of organisms. And in particular, this group proposed a scalable approach for designing living system in silico uh, using an evolutionary algorithm. And they show how the evolved the design can be rapidly manufactured using a cell-based construction toolkit. And now we can see how is the approach that they use. And in particular, the approach in this case that they used is to give an input to a scalable pipeline. In fact, we have biological building blocks that is uh, showed in the first graphs that will correspond to the cells and in the desired behavior of the future organism. In fact, at the end, design that fitting absently with the input will be our living system, which embodies the desired behavior as the output. And the pipeline is uh, a cycling sequence of generators and filters. In fact, in this case, after giving the side inputs, the algorithm that wraps and the generator combine the biological building block together to realize, realize a population of random design, as you can see here. And the population is evaluated throughout filters that delayed less performant design and overwriting them by more performant design in this case. But uh, now we can see how these algorithms work. So in fact, we can compare this algorithm to Darwin theory. In fact, uh, we um, principally we are all different because uh, of our phenotype. And uh, for example, this is the, the that is basically is the reason for different color of, of, uh, of uh, your hair, for example. And the phenotype, as you can see here, represent the results of your genotype, formed by all of your gene. In fact, uh, another po important point is the fact that the phenotype is the result of your reproduction of the reproduction of two generator organisms. And in this case, this process, um, in this process, the genome is edited by crossing over and point mutation that generate a new organism. And in, in fact, so um, as Darwin told us, species, species in this case were selected by speciation and natural selection to create a, a more suitable organism that can survive. So um, in this case, the algorithm that they used is called CPPN. That means composition pattern producing networks. And in particular, CPPNs are uh, algorithms that uh, through uh, mathematical and Gaussian function allow to uh, simulate what is the complexity of an organism in nature in a computer algorithm. In fact, they create a network with the, which is it is uh, with the, which it is allowed to analyze 
all of the mutation of the population. And in this case, in these uh, uh, images, we can see a mathematical, a mathematical way to represent the organism. In fact, in a mathematical way, the organism is represented by a weight matrix formed by voxel, in this case, positioned in the space. And the position is described by Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, and Z, that is showed in this, uh, in this image. And uh, that we compared it with the genes in conclusion. So the combination of the genes is described by function that in this case we call it genotype. And the final position of the voxel represented the phenotype of the weight matrix. So um, in fact, this, uh, um, this algorithm can be mixed, the weight matrix and can insert mutation as in the biological reproduction. In fact, you can see here in the image that we can have a single point crossover, two point crossover or point mutation and so on that generate a new organism. But an important point uh, at this time is that each matrix has an historical marking, a value that represents the number of acquired mutation. And this uh, historical marking is useful to divide the organism into growing generation. In fact, um, we can have the first, second, or third generation, for example. And um, each generation will be subjected to speciation and so only better design became suitable for the in vivo building, as you can see here. <clears throat> okay, here um, in this image, um, you can see a summary of the process that uh, starts principally with the two input. In fact, the first input is represented by two type of building blocks. And we have an inner and the uh, contractile part. And uh, uh, the contractile one is uh, necessary for the second input represented by the goal, which is the motility of the organism. And uh, in this, uh, um, at this point, input passed throughout the algorithm and only the better design survive and are realized in vivo. As you can see in the last, uh, in this part of the image. And now we can see um, uh, what are the design selection criteria. In fact, we have locomotion, robustness, and buildability. And first of all, locomotion, which allow passage of design that have the ability to move faster than others. Second, we have robustness, which only allow passage of design that sustain the desired behavior in the face of noise. And finally, we have a buildability, which removes the signs that are not suitable for the current build method or are likely to scale to more complex tasks in the future deployment. And uh, to satisfy the buildability filter, that is the first filter, they need organisms that answer three characteristics. In fact, uh, first of all, they need contiguous tissue region because the current build method layers um, tissue type sequentially, one on top of the other, with the, which layers filling the X and Y plane. And the second filter, uh, the second point is that uh, they need also stable geometry. In fact, they know that gaps of 100 microns or larger represent the smallest concavity, which was stable at the time of shipping and across at the last five successive days of, the, the, of development. So um, at this point, if the organism shape include gaps, they must be greater or equal of 100 microns. And finally, uh, the sign should be 50% passive tissue for energy efficiency and to scale to more complex tasks requiring non-actuating organ system and room for payloads. So um, in this imaging, you, uh, you can see how they develop the, the organism in vivo. So in fact, uh, first, uh, first of all, they um, inhabited the, the formation of multi cells cells and uh, they track the cells uh, uh, with a marker. 
And after that, they took layers of ectodermal tissues taken on top of each other, and at the center of which the layers of cardiomyocyte were placed, as you can see in the second image. And at this point, they um, let the tissue develop for two days and subsequently modified the organism after, according to the silico design, as you can see here. Okay, um, these uh, are live images that show the stratification of the two tissue type in the first two figures. And finally, we can see a microcautery device that is observed, which is used in conjunction with a surgical forceps, but a forceps that is not shown in this case. Uh, to, and uh, they are used to give a shape similar to the in silico design of the organisms. Okay, um, this is a um, brief video that shows the building process of the of the um, uh, generator organisms. Okay, mm. here um, you can see the microinjection of the fertilized Xenops embryos with the, that. Mm. And uh, uh, now we can see also the, um, the, that the vitelli membrane is removed from each embryo with the microsurgery forceps in this image. And okay, here is another embryo which is removed the, uh, the vitelli membrane. And so then. Uh, the next step is to remove the, um, uh, the animal cap of each embryo. And uh, the, uh, from the, the same animal cap, uh, the ectoderma, ectodermal layer is manually separated from the inner cell layers that you can see here. And um, in uh, uh, another step, subsequently, you can see after this process, that the remaining tissue is uh, agitated to further aid with the dissociation with the uh, micro pipette. Yeah. And in this case, uh, thousands of cells are transpired to agarose wells containing uh, normal uh, standard medium and uh, to promote cell reaggregation in this case, as you can see in this part. And uh, um, in, a second, in another step, we can see uh, the cell aggregate undergo compaction and uh, they readhere and uh, for uh, two additional days. And here you can see a microcautery device that is utilized to define the row shape of the transfer design. And uh, you can see also a microsurgery forceps that are uh, uh, used to sculpt the final features. And this is the final organism that we can see. Okay, so uh, they want also to test the organism for different behavior. And uh, principally, they tested the, uh, first they tested the final, final organism, first, for, first of, um, of all for the locomotion in this case, and um, as you can see in these uh, images, the predicted they be able in the space in silico in this case, and they mimic the locomotion putting the organism in aqueous environment. So in fact, they uh, wait until it touched the floor and they measure the shift during six seconds in this case, as you can see in, the, in this image. So in this case, is the same experiment in vivo. The, and uh, in this case, they're measuring the shift during uh, uh, 30 seconds. In fact, uh, okay, so um, in this case, uh, in this image, uh, you can see that uh, they repeat the measurement, um, also turning upside down the organism to better understand if the locomotion behavior was not too casual and it was due to the contractile part. In fact, uh, as you can see in the second image, uh, they note that when the organism, the organism is on their back, it can move in this case. Okay, another important point is that they uh, also want to test the ability of object manipulation. 
in fact, um, they put the design in the uh, crawled surface that is showed in these images, and they note that when the environment uh, is strewn with particular matter, Motile design spontaneously aggregated the external object, and this behavior is observed both in silico and in vivo. In fact, this is a new representative image of in vivo behavior. And uh, so, um, as you can see here, the in vivo experiment, in fact, show uh, an imagined behavior of debris aggregation by an individual with the, in, uh, within the environment in the first images. and also by a group of reconfigurable organisms over 24 hours periods. So um, uh, finally, some design involved for displacement reducing hydrodynamic drag via hole throughout the center of the transverse plane. And uh, um, this more complex topology was realized in vivo, but was not tolerated with the contractile tissue. Um, in simulations of these um, emergent features can be expanded as a patch to store and transport object. In fact, in a, um, in a subsequent round of evolution, a uh, patch could be incorporated as a design constraint. And the, the, the new goal of maximizing of distance of the career object. Okay. Uh, now uh, I will show you a briefly uh, video in which we can uh, I can uh, summarize what uh, Loredana said before. So, uh, a computer piece together biological building blocks into different structure, mm, and as you can see here, <laughs> this is a, an images of uh, in vitro and in vivo, uh, in vivo and in silico uh, uh, organisms. So the goal is the movement. Here you can see the building blocks, so the passive one and the contracting one. But uh, uh, most random configuration of the building blocks do not generate useful behavior. So uh, they uh, have to uh, try with different uh, configuration like this, as you can, as you can see here. So uh, they try with uh, many, many different conf configuration. And uh, with this uh, evolutionary algorithm, they can find a good configuration like this one. As you can see here, it can move uh, slowly, but it can move. Okay, and um, this configuration was then uh, built uh, from living cells, in particular from uh, the uh, frog cells. And um, as you can see with the tracker, you, uh, we can compare the in silico with the in vivo organism. So here this is the contracted part and here the inert part of the organism. And uh, here you can see a short video in which uh, uh, we can see that in vivo organisms can move like the in silico um, design. So here is a aerial uh, view. And uh, this is the other experiment that Loredana said before. So, so to verify the, that uh, it moves, um, moves due the to design features, the organism was placed on its back, as you can see in the bottom part, and uh, um, its function was lost. So uh, it can move when it's placed on the, its back. Okay, uh, they can uh, try with uh, many different configuration, uh, and uh, this process uh, could be um, uh, repeated indefinitely. In in so uh, we can have uh, many, many uh, shape uh, and different uh, combination, as you can see here. For the first application, this is a, a video in which we can see a collective behavior. So uh, these organisms can uh, can move and can uh, round alone or uh, uh, can touch each other and round together, as you can see here or here or here. And uh, for the object manipulation, they uh, use some debris. And as you can see here, uh, these organs can move the uh, particles. Uh, they also try to uh, transport objects, uh, but only uh, in silico. And uh, this is the uh, future uh, shape that uh, they want to try to build. And uh, yeah, unlike the brightness of current technologies, um, they note that when they cut and uh, produce a damage to the, uh, the organism, so when this organism is, uh, is damaged, for example, manually, 
uh, as you can see here, it can automatically, automatically self-repair. So, uh, at the end, we can think about uh, a lot of uh, future applications. And uh, yes, of course, I um, put here only a few examples, but uh, for the biomedical settings, uh, uh, an important, very, very important uh, characteristic of this uh, um, organism is the naturally limited lifespan. So uh, they can live uh, at least for seven days more or less one week. So, and uh, it is useful for the biomedical settings because they are uh, also, um, um, they can be uh, degraded and, and uh, so uh, they are bio biocompatible. And uh, uh, for example, here uh, we can see that uh, this organism can be used for a novel vehicle for uh, intelli intelligent drug delivery, for example, or uh, uh, for internal surgery or uh, for digest toxic or waste products and uh, moreover for identifying molecules of interest in uh, environments physically inaccessible to robots for example for uh, micro robots that are uh, made by different uh, materials for example plastic or um, i don't know me uh, metals uh, and uh, it could be toxic for the organism um, or uh, at least we, uh, they can uh, think about uh, the use of this organism uh, for the removing plaque from artery walls or identifying cancer or setting down to differentiate or control events in location of disease. For the research uh, fields, um, yeah, we can imagine uh, also a lot of application uh, and uh, for example, they can serve as a unique uh, model system facilitating work in the evolution of multicellularity or exobiology, artificial life, basal cognition, and uh, regenerative medicines. For example, another interesting thing that, that uh, I found is that um, in the environmental fields, they can also be used in future for uh, cleaning the oceans from microplastics. That is uh, an important thing uh, that uh, of our period. And uh, yes, I uh, I hope that uh, uh, we are, this presentation uh, was clear. But if you have questions, you can ask uh, us by the chat. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Georgia. Thank you, Michela and Loredana. Thank you all for uh, the attention. So um, if you have uh, any question, we will uh, be happy to try to give an answer. Um, while um, I just want to say that we have chosen the, this work and uh, analyzed this work because uh, it seems uh, very interesting to us, uh, especially for uh, its uh, huge number of potential uh, future applications, as uh, Michela say, but uh, all of them are still being tested and uh, many studies uh, will have to be done. So we don't know uh, for sure that all of these uh, can actually be realized or uh, if uh, it will uh, really uh, work in the future. So um, now Michela will try to answer your, uh, your question. So, uh, okay, Joanna, say, uh, you show them making the model organism using cells from uh, an embryo of Xenopus uh, living, but uh, have they used any other traditional model organism like uh, zebrafish or mice? Okay, okay Yona, uh, uh, this is a very good question. And uh, yeah, I ask my, myself the two question, but uh, uh, this uh, study is uh, very, very naive, and uh, this is the first time that uh, uh, scientists made uh, a um, reconfigura reconfigurable organism like this. Uh, yeah, they don't doesn't use uh, they didn't use uh, uh, other transsexual model uh, organism. They use only the Xenopus organism. But uh, I think that in the future they uh, will try to use different. Uh, 
uh, cells. Uh, um, I think, for example, also uh, for human <laughs> application and like something like uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. I don't know. I think about uh, something like this for the medical fields. Uh, for the research, of course, uh, some other uh, organism uh, could be used. And uh, yeah, for, for now, they uh, didn't try um, nothing different uh, from Xenobus uh, Levis. Okay, thank you, Michela. Um, do you have more uh, information about uh, the smart drug delivery? For example, uh, which kind of drug can be suitable or which type of organ tissue can be targeted? Okay, uh, no, uh, as I said before, and Loredara too, um, they perform only a simulation in silico for the drug delivery. And uh, um, they didn't uh, try to uh, to use it uh, in, uh, in vivo and uh, mm, I, what I think is that uh, yes it could be think about uh, some uh, uh, target uh, um, using um, a different uh, type of cells because when they use uh, uh, um, these two building blocks they use a 50% of uh, in, in um, um, inert uh, blocks, uh, inert cells, in this case epidermal cells, uh, also to uh, be improved, to be changed by other different cells. For example, I don't know, cells that can uh, uh, have some receptor, some receptor, some uh, uh, something that uh, can uh, gu uh, guide it, uh, guide it uh, to um, some um, specific organs or tissue, uh, of course. But uh, for now. Uh, what uh, what they done is uh, what they did uh, is uh, uh, only in silico, so uh, they don't perform nothing uh, about uh, drug delivery for now. Okay, Fabiana say, but um, there are a limit limit to the lifespan of uh, this organism. Okay, allora, they said, uh, sorry, well, <laughs> they said that uh, they can live uh, for uh, seven days, and uh, after these uh, seven days, they uh, stop functioning. And uh, this is um, also an um, uh, important thing for the safety of this, uh, this organism. But uh, yeah, uh, they can also improve and uh, uh, increase the, uh, their, uh, their lifespan uh, when they, uh, um, they put this organism in a nutrient-rich uh, cell culture media. So uh, the lifespan can be in increased uh, to weeks or months. So yes, uh, uh, for, uh, for this point, uh, uh, what they said is, uh, is that. So, um, Okay. okay. Charlotte, uh, say at the end of the lifespan of the artificial created organism, is the removal of the organism a problem or does the body eliminate it easily? Okay, they uh, didn't uh, uh, inject uh, or uh, put this organism in, into a uh, a, a body into um, an organism, a different organism. Uh, but uh, what they said uh, is uh, that uh, is this, um, these organisms are uh, biocompatible and uh, biodegradable. So what I think uh, is that uh, when, um, if you made it by your own cells, for example, uh, it can be eliminated easily by the body, but uh, they didn't uh, do it uh, for now because, uh, as I to as I told you, is a very very naive uh, uh, study. So uh, maybe in the future they can uh, uh, answer to your question. Okay. Professor Tati asks: Could the model be used to test drugs for human disease? Or is too far from our species? 
Okay, uh, I hope that uh, this model uh, could be used in, uh, in the future for for this uh, yeah for this aim for this uh, this goal. But for now, uh, uh, they perform only the, this organism uh, with uh, these uh, frog cells. But uh, yeah, of course, well, when if uh, we use different uh, cell type. Uh, autologous, for example, cell types, um, or uh, as I said, uh, uh, for example, uh, induced pluripotent stem cell, uh, um, or something like this, uh, mm, yeah, it could be used uh, for the human. But for now, uh, they, don't, they didn't uh, say anything about it because uh, uh, they didn't... Uh, um, perform experiment uh, for human or mouse or mm, mammalian uh, uh, organism. So uh, it could be uh, improved to, to answer your question. Okay. Ilaria say, what an interesting article. Thank you, Ilaria. Are um, the reference to possible problems or negative effects? Yeah, I can show you something. Uh, yeah, they. Um, I found uh, another. Uh, we found so we found another article uh, that is the, here. Living robot, uh, robots. Ethical question about Cenobot. And if you want, you can read it. So uh, yeah, um, in this. Uh, um, article, uh, uh, they uh, propose uh, some reflection on uh, ethical consideration and uh, something uh, that uh, uh, it could be negative. And uh, for example, they um, talk about the evolving uh, behind our control. So uh, the weaponized organism, the, uh, if they can become sent, uh, sentient or uh, that if they can acquire uh, reprodu uh, reproductive ability. So for now, uh, they can't uh, reprodu uh, reproduce and uh, it uh, could be a good uh, thing because uh, it could be more safe. But uh, in the future, if you, for example, use different uh, type of cells or, uh, for example, neurons uh, or something like this, uh, they can be becoming for example, sentience and uh, something like this. But uh, uh, for these problems, for these uh, negative uh, thing, uh, they uh, answer with the um, with the sentence. So uh, they uh, this uh, this uh, te technique uh, uh, should uh, inform any future guidelines or uh, regulation for the development of use of this uh, biobot. So that is. Uh, uh, like it's Xenobot for the frog, Biobot, and uh, yeah, uh, it could be regulated for sure because uh, also in an ethical uh, um, point of view, it could be um, an odd point, I think. Also, Yona asks, what are uh, ethical issues surrounding the generation of uh, these organisms? Okay, uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it is the more or less the same uh, answer. So, uh, yeah, they uh, talk about uh, uh, different um, points, different ethical issues uh, in this um, article. Um, yeah, they, for example, they think yeah that uh, these organisms could be uh, uh, weapon uh, weapon Z did. Uh, for example, they can be harm, create harmful. They can uh, create harmful organisms uh, in the future. But uh, what I believe uh, is that uh, as these uh, technology matures, uh, a regulation of uh, its use and uh, more important, uh, its uh, misuse uh, should be a high priority for for the scientists. Okay. Fabiana asks, the creation of these organisms seems very complex. Do you think this could be difficult, expensive or expensive to keep on a large scale? Okay, uh, so they uh, didn't uh, 
um, talk about uh, um, the cost of this uh, technology. For the um, first part, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, this um, algorithm uh, this, uh, is, uh, is expensive or to use, but uh, I think that they want to uh, improve this technology to become more uh, uh, automatical. Uh, and uh, uh, I think the problem is uh, that uh, it's hard to make it uh, manually. Uh, they need uh, um, um, a very um, difficult skill to produce, to um, manually modify this organism, uh, the shape of this organism. So I don't know if uh, it is expensive, but uh, uh, personally I think uh, uh, that uh, it is uh, very difficult to create. Yeah, for the human, for out manually, I, I, I mean. Ilaria asks, uh, is it possible to el eliminate genes or uh, silence them? Can these models be similar to know-hows? Okay, they um, knock down the, um, a part of the of gene that uh, regulate uh, the um, cilia of the of the organism. So uh, before um, layering these uh, these tissues, they inhibit the the cilia into the embryo cells, and uh, they made it because uh, they want to decrease the um, um, how can say uh, yeah the differentiation in the motility the the different motility uh, of the cells. So, so they want uh, that the movement uh, was regulated uh, only f uh, by the cardiomyocytes, and uh, so they knock down these genes. So they perform a, th uh, a sort of uh, knockdown, but uh, yeah, they perform only this. So I think that uh, this model uh, could be used to also to, uh, it is possible to eliminate genes or silence uh, these genes into the cells as uh, all the all the biology uh, scientists uh, uh, known, but uh, they uh, perform only the, um, this type of uh, ed um, editing for now. Mm, okay, if the, there are no, no more uh, questions, okay, I think. No more questions. So okay. thank you everybody for the attention. Yeah, I hope uh, we we was uh, all all the things uh, that we said uh, was clear. And uh, thank you for um, thank you uh, um, for the Jonah Club uh, team for this. And uh, okay, thank you all. And see you uh, next Tuesday. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.